you'd introduce the two young men you brought with you today, then make some uh, comments about the 2020 uh, Guntersville Wildcats. We'd appreciate it. Sure. Uh, good, good to be here today. This is my 11th season as head football coach at Gunnersville. I've uh, been there for 30, 30 years. Uh, I've got uh, to the right, I've got Jarrell Williamson, uh, senior inside linebacker, and then we got Jack Harris, senior receiver. Uh, both of them are vitally important to our uh, success this year. They've been working hard, setting a great example for the young guys, and uh, excited to have them back this year. As far as the season outlook goes, uh, had a good year last year, won nine games. Uh, we want to keep that going. We had kind of a different year offensively last year where we threw the ball much more than we had in the, had recently. I think we threw for over 2,000 and had a 1,000-yard rusher in Logan Pate. Uh, hopefully we can keep that going this year. We've got a big, uh, a good group of receivers. Jack's one of our, our main guys. So we need to be able to do that. Uh, last year, we uh, if there was a weak spot, we didn't play defense like we have in the past. And uh, one thing we did was move Jarrell from running back to Mike linebacker, and he really had a lot of success. So Jarrell's going to be really important, and the Mike makes all the calls for us, especially with all the no huddle offense, as you see. You kind of got to have a coach on the field type guy to do that. So Jarrell will be very important. So we need to get back to playing the Gunnersville defense like we have. Uh, excited to be in a new region. We've got some of the more local teams back in there and that we're going to play. Douglas, Crossville, Sardis, some of those guys we hadn't seen before. So it'll be great that we uh, get to play more, more games closer to home. Then we still got the traditional Boaz is in there. Uh, we still got the traditional rivals. We're playing Arab second, and then we end with Alberville, who's uh, it's always a great way to end the season. So uh, looking forward to the season ahead, and uh, can't wait to get started. All right, questions, guys? Y'all got a lot of production last year at a quarterback position, like you just said. Talk about this year, um, what you're looking at as far as quarterback goes. Um, we've had a move in, Cole McCurdy, who right now looks like he has a chance to be the starter. Uh, Cooper Davidson's also been working there. Antonio Spurgeon was uh, the, the JV quarterback, and he's matured a lot physically over the summer. Logan Pate that was our short yardage guy, so we really feel like we've got four quarterbacks that could go in and run the offense, and with the uncertainty this year with Corona, you can't ever have enough quarterbacks, so very fortunate that we've got four guys we've got confidence in. Talk about how many starters you've got coming back, Coach, on both sides of the ball. Sure, we've got seven starters back on offense and seven back on defense, and uh, Return our kicker, Pablo Rios, who uh, really did a good job for us last year. So uh, I guess offensively, anytime you lose your quarterback that played it like Zach did, Zach's gone on to Sanford this year. It's always a, a question for you. We lost two inside linebackers, but uh, so it's going to be a lot on Jarrell to make sure he gets the, gets the calls. But, you know, seven back on both sides is, is good, especially with not having a spring training. So having a turn to starter is probably more important this year than ever before. How unique, um, how unique is it to have a guy like Jarrell that can, he's got the skill set to play that mic, but also the ability to make the calls on the field like that? Uh, it, it's really, it's really good. I coached, I coached Sharon Williamson. It was Jarrell's dad back in the early nineties. And Sharon was a heck of a freaking uh, inside he linebacker. Did. He would knock your head off. So <laughs> uh, Jarrell was always running back, but I was in the back of my head that he could, could be a defensive player. And I think Jarrell, kind of flipped the switch and started thinking of the defensive mindset. He, he's kind of a big hitter like his dad. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good to have him in there. Jarrell, you want to say something about playing Mike? Uh, it's a learning experience. I mean, I always thought I'd play defense. All my teammates always told me, you're going to be a big hitter on defense. And I always thought, well, I had to try it out. And I liked it. And I want to see Toy get better at it. Yeah. Make my team better. Coach, you guys made it to the second round of the playoffs last season. What's it going to take this year to not only make it back to the postseason, but hopefully make another run? Uh, just uh, consistency on both sides of the ball. We try to, we try to always keep the focus on us and trying to play the best we can. And then you know you can't control how your opponents are going to play. So uh, with the region we've got, we've got a, you know, you're not really going to know what you've got until you play the first game, which is. Like I said, I've been in it forever, but it's really unusual because normally in the spring you've got guys out there you've got questions about, and then even if you have a jamboree 
you know, then you, but now we're play, we're going to East Limestone, a long road game up front, so we've got to be ready to go, and then we just got to build each week. Uh, we've only got 10 seniors, but uh, they're all starters. They're all important contributors, so it's going to be important for those guys, no matter what happens throughout the season, to keep us focused, to keep us going, and uh, I think they've done a good job of that, and we want to see these guys have the uh, best senior year they can have. For the players, Coach has already given you guys both some good praise already just here in the first few minutes talking about uh, making the calls on the field, kind of being the extension of the coaching staff on the field, and being one of the top guys to look for to make a play on offense. Talk about uh, for each of you what that means to you to have that trust from Coach and what that kind of uh, helps you, motivate you a little bit to, to, to perform better or to do better. Talk about that if you would. All right, Coach. It really means a lot. Uh, it's uh, a lot easier when you when your head coach trusts you. It's a lot easier to play hard for him and do all the little things. It just makes it a lot easier because you know he has your back and he's always there for you and he's trusting you no matter what. Some of what Josh said, it gives you the more like the fight to make your team better and you just strive to do it. Uh, Jack's, Jack's dad, PJ, was also an All-State player at Gunnersville, so you know, we, we've got tradition of winning and we try to we try to uh, take a lot of pride in that. We've got people that come out every year, so uh, that tradition of winning at Gunners is something we don't uh, overlook and kind of puts pressure on you each, each week. And when we take the field, we know we're expected to, to win. So uh, an off year is not expected by anybody. So we're gonna continue to try to fulfill that uh, tradition this year. Guys, building on what Coach said, as a senior group, and you're, I think said only 10 senior starters. Have you guys come together and kind of talked about setting your goals and what you guys want to accomplish this year at Gunnersville? Both yes. of you come in. <clears throat> yes, sir, we have. We, we've all, uh, we had senior pictures. We all like, came together and just talked about how we can get better every day and what our goals are for the rest of the season. So I feel like we have a pretty good idea of what we want to do this year. Yes, sir. We, uh, Set goals to have younger people look up to us and do what we did, but do it better, and just make everybody around us better. Yeah, we've never really been one of those people to get together and decide at the beginning we want to win ten or we want to win the county or we want to win the region. We just uh, try to keep the focus on being the best we can be each week. And even even in 2006, when we won the state championship, as a coaching staff, we didn't talk about. Uh, start the season, our goal is to win the state championship this year. It was just to try to be the best we can be every week and try to focus on the game ahead. So, uh, you know, we're just going to try to go in there week one and be ready for East Limestone and then hopefully get ready for ARAB week two and then take it as it comes. So, But I believe if they do keep doing that, that we'll have a chance to have a, a good team this year. Any questions? Jack. Um, as a senior, this year might have been the most important of all time yes. having on your off season. Did y'all get around your younger players and tell them that they had to keep working out? I mean, yes, sir. Uh, the limited stuff that the coach could do. Yes, sir. Well, uh, right after quarantine, when I was finally released from my parents to get out, kind of, <laughs> uh, we would all get together, and we still do like uh, twice or three times a week. We'll all get together, like get a lot of the young guys, and we'll go work out and throw and just practice the little things and just try to get better every day. But yeah, yeah, they did a good job. You know, they could we couldn't be on the uh, school campus, but they were getting together on their own without the coaching staff and, and doing that that type of thing. And that's a tribute to the to the seniors when they'll get those guys together. Even this week when we've been practicing in the mornings, they'll get together at night. Sometimes they'll turn the lights and they'll go throw on their own. So when you've got that and when you've got that type of leadership, you know, as a coach, I can get on people. But when the when the seniors are leading by example like that, it means a lot. Jack, you called a lot of passes last year. I know you're, you want that to be the same thing this year. What's it going to take to make sure that happens? And, and what, what's the work? Has the work changed from last year to this uh, year? Yes, sir. I've, I have been trying to like uh, work on my body. I'm, I'm pretty skinny, so I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to get bigger and uh, work on my like footwork and route running and uh, just continue working on my hand, just in all the little things to get better. Jack's got an offer from uh, from Harding, and we think he's certainly going to have other, hopefully, other offers as well. Uh, Jarrell, somebody after that move, he didn't have <clears throat> didn't have a lot of film at inside linebacker, but he's got a really good film. But uh, we think both these guys can play on the college level. It's kind of been a tough summer because 
they didn't get to go to those camps in person and show what they can do. So from a, from a perspective of showing the college what you, what you can do, it's, you know, this season is more important than ever because they missed out on, on all those summer combines and summer camps. But uh, I think both these guys can play at the next level. So we're hoping we'll get a good start and get them some more attention this year. Coach, you mentioned a moment ago uh, talking about the kids getting together when, when you couldn't necessarily get them together yourself and the senior leadership and everything showing up. Have you seen that since the HSAA said you guys can go back and start practicing and all that? Have you seen sort of the, uh, the, the, the progress, if you will, that maybe you were wanting to see because you didn't get a spring and, and summer's been kind of discombobulated? Have you seen any kind of growth or progress from that leadership? You know, we have, and, and the month of June was, was kind of an odd one because there was still so much uncertainty. Are we even going to play? And then we couldn't touch each other, so it was really odd. But I, I told the coaches, when we took the 4th of July break, I said, when we come back from this, we're going to coach like we're playing football whether we do or not. So uh, I think that kind of got the players' attention that all of a sudden I'm acting like a football coach again, you know. <laughs> so uh, and as soon as they saw the coaches turn up the intensity, then they did as well. So we can't control what's going to happen, but we can control our attitudes every day. So as far as I'm concerned, once July got here, it's football season again, and we've been working toward that. Coach, you talking about the players getting offers, you know, to play when a player that you coach moves on to the next level to play in college how's that make you feel oh it makes me feel great uh we've got you know J jordan bentley was a guy that uh played for us went to alabama a m was a, like a swack all-american and that type of thing and now he's graduated with a civil engineering degree and i think he's moved to texas gonna have a great job so uh uh you want to see those guys just go out and be the best that they can be we've got other guys that are uh we went to the local coaches got together in the county. We talked about kind of some stuff we're going to do and with the corona and things like that. Uh, Alvin will coach and the Boaz coach, Douglas coach, but one of Ernesto Cordova that was a former uh, linebacker of mine, he's in the Marines and he's in San Diego. So I got to talk to his mother. So I'm not just proud of those guys that go play college football. I'm proud of those guys that go in the military or – when I go to Walmart, somebody comes up to me and shows me pictures of their kids. You know, anytime you stay somewhere 30 years like I have at Gunnersville, I'm coaching second generation guys and stuff like that. But it's, uh, you know, I'm proud of all of them that go on to be a success. That's what we want them to do. Very few have get to go and play college football. If they do, we're, we're happy for them. But anybody that goes on and is a good dad and a good husband and, uh, you know, does, has a great job, we're, we're proud of all of them. Question for the two guys, and I've asked this question to other seniors that have come through media day to day. Last <laughs> week when the Alabama High School Athletic Association <clears throat> said that we're going to have a football season. Talk about how that made you feel because I heard one guy say this week, you couldn't have a senior season without football. That's a good point. Well, I think when I – well, I think when I first found out, I probably called Drill first and told Drill that we're going to play. And it was, uh, it was really a great, it was a great feeling because – we know how hard we've worked this year and what we can do. So it's it was it was really was a relief. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was very happy. We talked like for an hour about it, about how we're gonna work and how we're gonna be really good. And just with our sports, it just well, my life won't be the same. Just don't have anything to do. <laughs> I'll say this too: both these guys are multi-sport athletes. Uh, they're both uh, excel on the basketball court. Jack plays baseball also, so. School like Gunnersville, you need your athletes to play multi sports. And, you know, as soon as football's over, I like to go to basketball and watch those guys. So uh, they're, uh, they're good at all sports. Coach, one of the reasons I think Gunnersville has been so successful over the years is the stability. You talked about being there 30 years. Your staff has been with you, a lot of those guys, for a lot of years. That stability has to help you in the locker room and the kids that come up through the program. It does. Uh, just a couple guys. Chris Kennedy's the offensive coordinator. He's been with me for 10 years, then Ryan Thomas for nine years. Uh, Shannon Cahill's a guy that played on the state championship team. He's our strength and conditioning coach. So uh, uh, it's important to have that stability. But, uh, you know, looking back at Gunners for football, in the, in the past uh, 20 years we've had two coaches, you know, Co Coach Isom and then me. So uh, I think uh, as far as the standards we try to do is the same stuff we did back with, with Coach Isom before that brought us success. 
now the game's kind of changed a little more wide open, but the core fundamental beliefs are still what we've always had back there. So stability's been important, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep those guys together. Good good coach, good assistant coaches are uh, very important to our success. Any other questions? Coach, you know, right now I got all this pandemic stuff going on, and you know, the kids, is, you want them to play football naturally. You know, it's important for the communities, too, to have an out to get to go to football games and watch these kids play because, you know, the community is a big part of, especially like Gunners. Life. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> it's important that we go back to school, but you're right. Once you go back, we've got kids in the band, we've got the cheerleaders that are working hard. Everybody's excited. Football season to me kind of builds the, kind of gets the whole school together and gets the community excited, like you said. And then, uh, you know, to me, we got a unique thing with us. Arab's a huge game, Boaz's a huge game. Gunners will outrevel in week 10 is something, oldest rivalry in the state, something not many people get to be a part of. So uh, regardless of how your season's going, you know that you got that big outrevel game at the end. So. Uh, Anyway, it's uh, we're fortunate to be at a place and at a county that puts so much emphasis on these rival games. A lot of people don't really get to play rivals, and we get to play three or four of them every every year. So the kids are excited about it, we're excited about it, and uh, you know you don't know what the season's going to hold. So every game is important. You don't want to let one slip up because you don't know how many you've got left. So every week's important, every day in practice is important, and uh, I just feel fortunate to be able to coach these guys and looking forward to this. Season ahead. Any other questions? All right, Coach. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to, uh, to Jarrell and Jack for being here with us today. Good luck to the Wildcats this year. Thank you.